Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So it's time for a market update to see how the freight market has changed since last week. As usual, we're going to be looking at volumes, rejections, diesel prices, and then focusing on specifics for dry vans, reefers, and flatbeds. But this week I made these charts a little bit more detailed, so let me know if you like the format. Also, unfortunately, my board is glitching, so everything will be posted here, all of these charts. Ready? Let's go. All right, so I will be looking down at the charts right here. Sorry if I'm not looking into the camera, but you will see them all posted right here. So first we're starting with the net change in carrier population. How many carriers net did we lose week over week? So as of last week, we lost 87 carriers net. Now let's take a look at the contract versus spot market to see how much more do contract carriers get paid versus spot market carriers. The dark blue line is us in 2024 being compared to 2023, which is in light blue. The higher this line is, the smaller the margin between what contract and spot carriers get paid. So currently contract carriers are getting paid 65 cents per mile more than those spot carriers. All right, now on to volumes and rejections, starting with the volume chart. So dark blue is us in 2024 compared to 2023 in light blue. We can see that volumes are going down a little bit, but they are still above 2023 levels. Now, rejections, as you can see, they actually went up. They are on their way down now, but they are currently at 5.39%. Last but not least, let's look at diesel prices. And since October, we have seen that diesel prices have gone up. Currently, they are at $3.66 per gallon on average, and this is according to truck stops in the US. Now on to spot market data for specific equipment types, and we're going to start with those dry vans. So as you can see, all of this data is from FTR Intel. I just put it into this chart. Week over week, rates for dry vans went up by one cent per mile, and year over year, they are actually 0.1% higher than this time last year. But of course, according to the five-year average, they're down 12%. Now, in terms of volumes, volumes for dry vans on the spot market actually went down by 4.6%, which is 8% lower than this time last year, and 37% lower according to the five-year average. Now, I want to show you two maps, which I haven't shown before, and this is the changes week over week in the general freight market for uh, dry vans. So first we can look at the volume changes. Anything red is a decrease in volume in those markets in the general market. Anything blue is an increase in volume. So you can see that for the most part for dry vans, there were decreases in the amount of volume available in the general market. But if we take a look at the rejection map, we can see that there is more blue there, which means there are more areas where people are rejecting freight for dry vans. Now, instead of doing that long table with top five volumes, top five rejections, I decided to get straight to the point. The top five market areas where more volume falls from the contract market to the spot market. And those are Green Bay, Wisconsin, Atlanta, Georgia, Ontario, California, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and Elizabeth, New Jersey for dry vans. Now, next to those areas, you will see the capacity situation in the spot market uh, according to the DAT heat map. So what you can see is that most of these areas are either hot or warm, which is good, but they're surrounded by over capacity. To give you an idea of what I mean, let's take a look at this DAT map. What you can see is that, for example, Green Bay, Wisconsin, it is a lukewarm market, a warm market, but around it, there is some capacity around. The bluer it is, the more capacity in that market area. The markets that are really red and maybe not surrounded by as much overcapacity for dry vans right now are actually in the Pacific Northwest, which is interesting. All right, now let's talk about reefers on the spot market. So week over week, reefers actually lost about one cent per mile on the spot market, but compared to this time last year, these rates are 0.6% higher. Now, over the past five years, they're down 10%. 
In terms of volumes, volumes for reefers also dropped by 4.7% week over week, but they're 4% higher than this time in 2023. Over the past five years, however, 34% lower. All right. Now in terms of the general market and the volume and rejection situation, we'll look at rejections first for reefers. We can see that for the most part, there was a decrease in rejections for reefers. A lot of the areas are red, although Utah, uh, parts of Colorado, North Dakota, Tennessee, those saw increases in the amount of freight that was rejected. Now, if we take a look at the volume side, Unfortunately, most of it is red, which means that most of the volumes for reefers in the market areas in the general market saw a decrease. All right, now in terms of the contract to spot, which areas see more contract freight go to the spot market because of higher volumes and rejections paired together. Those five market areas are Joliet, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Rockford, Illinois, and Atlanta, Georgia. Now, again, on the spot market, the capacity um, situation is mostly for those market areas. It's warm or hot, but again, they're surrounded by overcapacity. So looking at the data, you can see that a place like, for example, Atlanta, Georgia, which is orange here, it's a hot market or a warm market by itself, but look around it. It's surrounded by blue, which means all of those trucks are going to be deadheading for their next load to Atlanta, Georgia. What we do see, however, is that the West Coast for reefers is more or less doable. It's relatively better because there is no such huge overcapacity problem around the markets that are deemed better. All right, last but not least, we have our flatbeds on the spot market and we're going to start with the rates. Now, in terms of the rate per mile for flatbeds, it saw a decrease of three cents per mile week over week. And these rates are actually 1% below what they were at this time in 2023. Now, according to the five-year average, flatbed rates are down 7%. However, volumes went up week over week by 3.4% and are 34% higher today than they were this time in 2023, which is insane. Over the past five years, however, volumes are down 11%. Now, in order to figure out the relatively better places for flatbeds, let's take a look at the market maps that I make according to truck stop data, the load board. So first you see the load map, which shows us which states have more loads coming out for flatbeds on the spot market. Now this is by state, not by market area, but you can see that the Southern states are the ones that have the most loads as well as the Western states. Now in terms of capacity, same principle, the darker it is, the more flatbed capacity in those states, and they tend to stick where there are loads. <laughs> for lack of a better word, but for the most part, there is more capacity in the South as well as the East Coast and parts of the Midwest. Putting those two together, though, we're going to figure out what the load to truck ratio is, and this map is a little bit different than it used to be. Anything that is burgundy red is severe overcapacity, which means that there are two or more trucks per load. So for one load, there are two trucks available. You can see the states here. Anything red is overcapacity. There is still less than a load per truck in those areas. Anything orange is pretty much equilibrium, which is one to one and a half loads per truck. Anything yellow, which is only Delaware, this time is slight under capacity, a slight lack of trucks, which means they're about one and a half to almost two loads per truck. Anything light green, like neon green, like Arkansas and Idaho, is under capacity. They're about two to three loads per truck. Anything normal green has five to 10 loads per truck and anything dark green, Mississippi and Oregon is a market where there is severe uh, under capacity. There are just not enough trucks for the amount of loads over 10 loads per truck. However, be careful. I keep repeating it every week, but someone always misses it. 
Oregon and Washington are one of those places where brokers will repost one load 150 different times. Is there more volume in Oregon right now than there was about three months ago? A hundred percent. But just be careful. Sometimes the situation looks a little bit better than it actually is. So yeah, that's the situation this week. I had a whole long spiel about how our week went this week and the challenges we faced and what was good about this week. But you know what? After what happened yesterday, it's still pissing me off with the carrier 411. I just, I, <laughs> I don't know. I guess telling you about my week is just, it just, it's not as relevant as what is happening right now in the trucking industry. So instead, I'm going to take the time to tell you guys that I did end up emailing a four page letter to the OIDA and I'm planning to mail in a letter to the FMCSA. Do I think it's going to go anywhere? I don't know, but I have to try, I suppose. So yeah, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy and keep learning. See you in the next video.